next guest, though, of the hour. It's David Bonson, everyone. He's the founder and managing partner of the Bonson Group, a $4 billion wealth management firm, and the author of There's No Free Lunch, 250 Economic Truths. He joins us now. David, welcome and good morning. How are you? Well, good morning. I am great. Thanks for having me. I'm glad that you're here. You know, we're heading into 2024 quickly. It's almost September. I mean, yet tomorrow will be September. We're 400, I think, 32 days away from the presidential election, a much shorter time, obviously, to Super Tuesday and beyond. Um, and while there's been a lot of conversation, and I think understandably so, and thoughts around the legal troubles of the presumptive front runner. Donald Trump, there hasn't been as much conversation, at least on the campaign trail and the focus that we've seen on Bidenomics and what's been happening. And normally in an election year with an incumbent running, you're able to hear a lot of the candidates go at these different policies. Republicans are trashing Biden on it. But is the critique accurate? Well, I agree with you that there hasn't been a lot of focus on it, and that and that seems to cut both ways. That there, uh, most of the criticism that one party would have for the opposing party is rooted in a lot of the uh, accom accompanying drama, as opposed to some of the policy specifics. Where the Biden administration and their campaign want to use Bidenomics as an advantage, there is Republican pushback. And to answer your question, I think. Uh, it's a difficult case to be made, even if there are certain economic metrics that are positive, which there are, most importantly, low unemployment. That generally is a very helpful thing. But the sentiment is all pretty clear that the, the voting electorate doesn't necessarily see it as a robust economy. I mean, certainly real GDP growth has been very low. It has been positive, but it's not the type of thing you campaign off of. It's just sort of tepid, you know, hey, we're not technically in recession type of growth. And, you know, that inflation thing still kind of lingers over there. When you look at Bidenomics, sometimes when this initially was you know, coined that, and obviously I think, the, I think maybe the press even coined that phrase for him, but when you think about it, there's always a messaging issue when it comes to trying to sell what your platform, what your position, what your data points are. And while the old phrase is, it's the economy, stupid, and everyone leans in, in any poll, the economy seems to take number one priority for all of those who are polled, selling the economic positives is always difficult for an incumbent um, president. It's usually easier to attack. Do you think that there is, I mean, has the Biden administration done a good enough job of selling and touting whatever has been positive about Bidenomics? And are, are there are there areas that they need to beef up in terms of trying to sell that to the American people? Because everything obviously is not all good. You know, it's such a difficult question for me because I'm an economist and a finance guy, and, and I wish I were a better political tactician because my political uh, side tells me that their best argument for re-election is, is opposing Donald Trump and the unpopularity he, he has, per, particularly with moderates and independents and, and suburban women and, and things like that. On the economic side, I think it is a tough case to make. Although they could tout the low unemployment and wage growth, the problem, I think, is that there is still the really difficult um, multi-year issue around inflation that if you're going to go into the economy, you can't just say one data point. You're going to have to sort of talk about the overall impression. And higher interest rates and higher inflation, whether it's fair or not, are never a good thing for a presidential candidate. And so I think that by going into economics as a lead issue, they've kind of invited, you know, the baby and the bathwater. And it's going to be it's going to be a tough case to make. The stock market's going to have a lot to do with it. And, and I've written about this in the past that we just simply don't have presidents not get reelected in our country when the stock market has been good. And, and the inverse is true as well. They, they do not win re-election when it's been bad. Um, there was a really bad year last year. It's rebounded a lot this year. Overall, how the market does in the next year sort of indicates how people feel about the economy. And that's going to have a lot to do with the Bidenomics as a good issue or a bad issue for the president. When you think about the um, 
the economy more broadly. I mean, I think there are so many data, data points that the average layman, I'm, and I include myself, by the way, the category of economic layman and these issues, and I turn to you for your expertise in these notions, but people are associating what the jobs numbers look like, the labor market as an indication of how they feel about the economy, the, the prices of uh, whether it's gas or eggs all comes into play. Are those the right data points to look at when you're talking about the health of the economy or the way people should contextualize and understand what's working and what's not working? Or are there other hidden things that maybe you are thinking about that the average person doesn't see as the, the, the litmus test and barometer for how the structure is working? And so for me, I look at productivity. I look at economic growth. Um, it isn't hidden. It, it's available for anyone to look at, but I can certainly understand that it isn't the most kitchen table type issue. Real GDP growth sounds fancy. It sounds like an aggregate of different data points, which of course it is. Um, but whether it was the Bush or Obama or Trump or Biden administration in the last 20 years, we've had very low real economic growth. And yet we've had, you know, bad recession with the financial crisis. We had the COVID moment. So there can be kind of extraneous circumstances and that affects the politics as well. I think that you brought up two data points and the problem for the Biden administration is that one of them is really good for them and one of them is really bad. So milk and egg and gas prices are not going to help them. And those are probably the most important issue, particularly when you're talking about uh, middle class and lower income voters. But on the unemployment side, it's a very good data point. Three and a half percent unemployment should get anybody reelected. We just have more complicated, nuanced data this time around. Do you get a sense, I mean, obviously the way people view everything these days, it seems, is through a political lens. Um, but when we talk about Republicans or Democrats having the policy positions to execute and implement, are there legislative initiatives or are there particular policy um, viewpoints that you find the most persuasive to try to either course correct or address what has happened post pandemic? Well, there are a number of things that I think could be very bad on a policy standpoint, and that's certainly a part of the answer to your question. And there are things, of course, that I think could be good. One of the things that has to be said, and this is about as nonpartisan as I can possibly be, um, presidents get way too much credit for a good economy and they get way too much blame for a bad economy. And that's a problem of their own choosing. I mean, they choose to campaign that they did this to the economy. We created jobs. We made economic growth. So they're going to do that. They have to live with the other side of the coin, too. And both parties do it. And I, I kind of disagree with it, but I've given up on trying to change it. Ultimately, though, what I think is happening in our economy is not about who is president. It's structural that we have way too much debt. The Biden administration tried to grow the debt even more. That build, build back better did not end up passing. But that's really what is going to be hampering economic growth is the overall excessive spending. And obviously, that's not a partisan issue. The Biden administration has spent too much. The Trump administration spent way too much. We're living with this excessive debt, and that puts downward pressure on economic growth. And I, and I think that's really the issue that I'd like to see them deal with from a policy standpoint is right-sizing the spending, limiting deficits, and coming up with some economic growth policies that will help uh, overcome the, the hindrance that the indebtedness is creating. Really important to get your perspective. Thank you so much, David Bonson, everyone, founder and managing partner of the Bonson Group. You can follow him on Twitter as well at David Bonson, B-A-H-N-S-E-N, David Bonson, everyone. I don't know, I call it Twitter, it's called X, whatever, you know what I mean. David, nice to talk to you today. Have a great rest of your day.